Okay. Yeah, come close. I'm ready. Greetings, everybody. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Nia Akoma. Happy Akoma Day. Five. <laughs> Virtue. Um, endurance. Principle. Unified mind. Soulmate story is amazingly beautiful. We have Dr. Akil and Sia and Mood Sia Kalfani here. Um, Yay! And you could, this is like you a reunion ahead. for um, my it sister. Sure go ahead. You, could, you could go in and talk about the uh, Sacred Sisters. I know you um, just going to do that. Well, I'm just excited. I haven't seen you in the flesh in a while. So we, we um, met, if you saw when we were talking to um, Empress Tandi, we met at the same time in that same group yes. reunion, which was like 11 years Yeah, 2011, 2010, 2011, yep. Yeah. So we kind of, I guess, started at the end of the year because I know I just had my child this home counting. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I just want to say, yes, Lucia was a superstar in the um, womb dance, the dance of the womb. <laughs> <laughs> was doing so amazing <laughs> at that time um several people came to that next february's acoma day so i don't know if you remember this queen of fua was going to do the dance of the, the womb yes and then like convinced me to do it i don't say convinced me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, not ready, but she was always so graceful so much like um i remember certain elements about you know my relationship with Empress Tandi, because that was my ask. I remember so much about my relationship with Lucia yeah. and, um, you know, Sonia, Danielle, a couple of the women that I already knew, but I always felt that Sia and the Kalfanis just represented um, family in such a great way, humor and grace, intelligence, sophistication. Oh, thank you, Tua. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure I always and and the same for you all, always. Well, we looked at you and we were like, hey, you know, if they can bring their children and their children are so, you know, personable, well happy, you know, they're they're content to be in these spaces. I'm like, as we have had more and more children, <laughs> we have definitely been a model for being what I felt was really like a, a, a wonderful guide as a mother. Yes. You know, you have your interests or your idea of direction where you want your children to go. Yeah. But even when I came to visit um, for the rite of passage that the girls were going through, oh, I yes. just felt like you're um, the, the, just the perfect gentle guide. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> this is why it's great to be around um, great like, like people, people because you really yes. do get something from their personality yes. that you can model for yourself and say this is how you know grace is intelligence is um, guidance is and then I have it in the flesh rather than just a list of characteristics you really can say this is the way you can have these conversations this is I remember one of the conversations that we had where I was like wow this is really pretty intense that what the girls are talking about and okay. you were so calm <laughs> I didn't know that, but you were just like, okay, I'm going to still create the sacred space for you to tell me <laughs> what is going on for you as a young person. And I said, my daughters were much younger, but as there are, so I was turning 12 now, I'm like, oh, wow. at that time where you're making a shift yeah. as a young girl, where you do want to be able to come to your mom and have those kinds of conversations. So I just really, um, it's of course through you. And I met your husband. <laughs> and, and I have to say, you know, um, Dr. Akil, you know, so much love and respect. You know, we um, when we when we met, it was instant admiration. You know, Nawasha was talking about Sia all the time, and you know, Thandi and Sia, Thandi and Sia. She was always mm -hmm. saying something that one of them said or whatever. And you know, I'm just a lover of the people, so I'm like, oh, we, you know, I, I want to meet her now. You know what I mean, like. And um, just knew that somebody that amazing had to be married to somebody that amazing. And um, Dr. Calfani, like when I first started to get to know him and know about him, he's just one of these people that <clears throat> everybody in the area knows and everybody's got some story and everybody's, you know, I, I actually um, 
met a brother who I was actually counseling, um, who had been incarcerated for, wow, it's like 40 years. Wow. He's home. And um, he told me that he went up to um, Newark. He's 70, he's in his 70s. Um, and so um, we call him the general. And um, I'm sure you might know who it is. Yeah, know who you're talking about. <laughs> you, know, you know who it is, Messiah Monk Monk, General Monk. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, he was like, yeah, brother, you got to come, um, you know, up to my area and, and, and talk that stuff you're talking and this, that, and that, you know, it's like, because we got a brother um, at the college over there and, you know, this, that, and that. I was like, oh, I said, you talking about Dr. Cobb, right? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, that's my man right there. I know, you know. I said, yeah, we've done some stuff together and, and our families love each other. And, yeah. um, you know, um, just, you know, instantly y'all were amazing to us. But we did, you know, as much as she talked about Sia all the time, just having grace and having having um, love for her children and, and just being centered, we as a family channel y'all all the time with that taking your children because we used to be like man we work together we travel we turned down so much work over our career just because of our children out of the country and stuff like that i have always felt leery where nawasha is always get, she's always game to go because she lived outside of the country and i but i'm like i my paranoia is, is protection so i'm like hey, do i feel comfortable going out of the country with my wife and two little girls um, to some people who I don't know. And, you know what I mean? I was like, you know, so we turned down a lot of stuff. But as the girls started to get older and just within the country, as we were getting jobs and just, not even just getting jobs, but just wanting to do things, to vacation, to do various things, you know, we had the means, but a lot of times I'm like, oh, I don't know if we should drive over. You know, I, you know, I have a more traumatized youth. So my, my, my instant my knee-jerk reaction is one of protection. Whereas Nawasha has not had a traumatized youth at all. So her, she's like, you know, Minimal. you know, Minimal like I, I, I'm ready to go anywhere and do anything. And I'm like, mm, no, we're not gonna go. But when we watched y'all over like a 10 year period, I'm like, man, we bump into them in places and they got the whole family. Or if we talk to them like, hey, what's going on? Oh yeah, we all just came back from so-and-so. And I'm like, uh, did y'all know anybody here? I'm like, no, we just went there. And we we would start saying, you know what? Um, we're gonna go to LA or we're gonna go, we're gonna just channel our Calfonis, you know, <laughs> channel our inner <laughs> Calfonis. We're just gonna take the whole family. And it really has opened me up um, to possibilities. I'm almost getting to the point because, you know, Nawasha studied abroad in high school. And she has put that in the girl's mind. And I've been like, no, 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 ever since. But now, almost by the time they get to high school, I might be there. <laughs> you know, but um, you all, I think that's the most profound, you know, as individuals, you're, you're just amazing. Um, but I think that's the most profound um, thing about you all to me. Your family dynamic is so beautiful. It's so tight and it's so we together. You know what I mean? And this is what it is. And so we've always been inspired by that and just the great things y'all do in the world. So we definitely, um, you were actually, to, to, to just tell you, you were actually, um, I knew we had spoke to the Barutis uh, um, in Wally Moo and Yal Baruti, and y'all were the second people that I called because I was uh -huh. like, oh, I really want... And I was like, you know, the Califanis didn't respond. And I know we love each other. So I'm like, oh, they must be busy or something. Or I don't know. I, I know the number is correct, but they didn't respond. And so I was like, you know, hey, it is what it is. We'll catch them later. We know that you have come to a coma day. I got great pictures of you, Dr. Califani, with Queen of Fool. I got I to gotta send them to you. But see, let me tell you something. That dance of the womb, we have it on video. In fact, oh, wow. we have the whole Acoma Day on video, but it's one reason the washer won't let me play it. <laughs> because of all the sisters doing the dance of the womb, I said that every, me out. <laughs> everybody is in the movement. Queen of Fluid just went off. It's so beautiful. She goes off, and the only sister up there is like, 
is no. what it looks like. No, what was going on in your mind? I, I said, I seen you do it before. Like, what, what was going on? She was like, the day was so, you know, I had so much going on. Tia can tell her experience. So she I, won't let the, me show Behind the scenes, <laughs> I drove to Brooklyn to scoop up Queen Afua. I remember. We driving back, Mancha was calling me about where to sprinkle the, the flower petals. Oh, yes. I, like, I remember that. Please, we got to just get off on this exit. We're not even doing it all day. <laughs> and she was like, no, he's he needs your energy to sit. And I was like, good thing you're in the passenger seat because I'm just not in the mood. And then I had the two babies there. And this is why I'm saying, you know, really putting your mind around um, doing things and still smiling and having fun and being present and being in the moment. I said, yeah. just um, erase me out of the footage because everyone else looks great. Everybody looks great. <laughs> everyone everyone looks looks great. great. We'll we'll except, put it up. I'm going to send it to y'all. Okay. Okay. Everybody looks great except for the watch. I'm like, you actually look mad. And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like I'm like, what? My queen of was like, you have to do it. It's your event. I was like, yeah, I'm like, queen, what's going I had on? to try. I had to sprinkle flowers. I have to the babies. I just could not wrap my mind around it. But it's nothing like seeing your state, you know, oh, like yeah, outside yeah. of your body, being like, "Wow, yeah. oh, I really look like I could not, I could be doing something." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, it's one. It's funny because that's one of the things that I often tell um, my children and young folks in general is that to be mindful when you're in front of a, a, an audience or a camera, how the audience sees you. Right. You have to think about what you're projecting and what you're going to be receiving. So I'm on stage a lot. So I'm cognizant of that. But when I see other people, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're doing one of these numbers. And I'm like, don't cross your arms when you're in front of an audience. That doesn't, you know, unless you're intentionally do whatever you do, do with intention. Yeah. Right. And that you if. If you if you saliva hanging out your mouth, then you're doing it with intention. Right. But don't just do stuff uh, because the camera and the audience reveals more about you in those moments than what you think. And so you have to be mindful of that uh, as you're going through the process. So you, you have to be like that. I say be like the dancer that's 110 percent committed. Well, there I go phasing out. <laughs> He's amazing. He can disappear. That's right. Bam. <laughs> um, but you know, be a hundred and ten percent committed to what it is that you're doing because if if you're not or when you're not, that uh, it comes through, right? And be prepared to fail and to allow that failing that uh, you want to. Excuse my phasing in and out, but you want to. Um, I tell my students even I say fail hard. Right. Uh, don't don't fake fail. Uh, if you're going to, you know, you, you got to commit 110 percent. I've fallen lots of times. Uh, but 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 what I do do is I keep getting up, you know, um, and uh, like you guys were mentioning about us uh, traveling. We um, in 2019. Uh, while I, now, in addition to my other responsibilities, I also run the Center for Global Education and Experiences. So I've been doing a lot, a lot of travel. Uh, uh, COVID's clipped my wings, mm -hmm. but um, the previous year I was in China, Nigeria, uh, 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 South Korea, uh, a whole bunch of places, uh, South Africa. And then um, they, I, I was teaching a class and uh, well, I, I took the whole program to uh, China in 20, yeah, it was 2019 in the summer for five weeks. And we took, and, and Sia and the kids came, uh, her mother came. Uh, and so they were there for what, three weeks? Mm -hmm. They were there for three, we three out of the five weeks. Uh, so it was really a great experience. They, you know, um, uh, the, the, some of the, the kids were a little resistant in the beginning, but I think they, 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 you know, they had a great time and realizing that, you know, these opportunities don't come uh, a dime a dozen. And, you know, I already had a, a, a room, so we didn't have to pay for the room. Uh, we had to cover their ticket costs, you know. So those things uh, made it made it a great experience. And uh, the more we can do to to uh, I, I guess to to bring that, you know, we have our own challenges. Uh, see, that's why I faded out right there. <laughs> but uh, in the, in the process of that, you know, uh, one of the things that we do, uh, we went to um, the Sankofa conference. Have you guys ever been to the Sankofa conference? Yes, Nation House. 
Yeah. Yes, that's where we met uh, Bobby Baruti. He just sent me a message today. Like, I remember when we met you, we went in 2008. I think you went a couple times, though, didn't you? Yeah, I, we went together in 2008. Yeah, that was my first time going. Okay. So we've been lots of times, and uh, one of the times though we got a we got a reading, and a reading said that we need to do uh, uh, to address some of the issues going on in, in the family in the household was family prayer, and so uh, we adopted having family prayer every Sunday, uh, and so we come together to do family prayer uh, almost every Sundays, right? So that and that's been for what four or five years now, no, 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 more than, than that. that, yeah, that's. Um... It's probably at least eight years now. So every every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And uh, now my older two children, one is married and living in Texas. Uh, the other one is uh, in school as a junior at North Carolina State. And we got a, we got a junior in high school and a, a 12th grader now. I mean, no, uh, um, a 12 year old. <laughs> Going on 13. <laughs> right. Uh, but, <laughs> exactly right. Uh, but, but uh, you know, that, that through all of what our challenges have been, the things we've, we've struggled through and our successes, that uh, that's been a great uh, kind of tie in. Um, yeah, and when yeah. the children are out and wherever they are, uh, we, we call them and they know that they're going to be part of family prayer on Sunday. And my daughter with her husband, that he's part of family prayer on Sunday, right? Wow. So these things are, is something that's going to be part, come part of our family legacy. And I think that that's one of the things that, that's important is to think about legacy. Uh, right. What is the legacy that your, uh, your family institution leaves for, for others? And uh, even when you have those challenges, whatever they may be, uh, you know, you might have to wrestle her or something, uh, that when, when, <laughs> I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, the uh, character in the family, so y'all have to forgive me. <laughs> I, I may not be in public, but, uh, at home, uh, people probably wouldn't recognize, <laughs> they're like, who is this guy? <laughs> but, um, you know, that we have to really, uh, um, you know, confront those things and bring folks in. Uh, I ran for U.S. Congress last year, right? I remember that. And uh, my daughter did the website. She was the one who's the twelve-year-old. Wow. <laughs> and the website is banging, right? And my, then my son, the, the who's in, in at North Carolina State, he helped kind of polish some things up. But she's the one who set it up. Right. And so then, you know, just getting everybody involved. My other son helped to put signs out, you know, and so uh, even I had to twist his arm, but he still helped to do it. <laughs> and so then all those different things are are ways to incorporate everybody into the family. And I think this is also when I talk about legacy, the other thing I want us to think about is that this comes from, you know, my grandparents and my parents. My grandparents had been married for 68 years before my grandmother passed. Wow. Right. Wow. Uh, and my parents just celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary. Wow. So, you know, through whatever their challenges were and are, uh, that they've continued in the process uh, to to maintain their union. And so then my father just turned 80 and my mother just turned 75. So wow. that uh, through all of whatever their uh, challenges might have been, that they've persevered. And so uh, we, we, we uh, see it that there, that there is possibility of of uh, having those successes and having those examples uh, and knowing some of the challenges that they've been through in the process uh, gives us the, the food to, to, to eat off of so that we can you know, become that same type of thing. Uh, that, you know, that's really amazing. We, we do a similar thing on Sundays. We shut our, our outside world down from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And mm -hmm. we call it COD day where we just yeah. stop everything. No media, no anything. If, if, if we play a game, it's a board game and we're playing together. Um, no video games, no television, unless it's something educational or uplifting or spiritual. We watch yoga and different things like that. But um, we start off, we do a family prayer. We go through our family laws. And, and you know, we have been telling the girls now, we've been doing this before they were even born. So it's all they, all they know of the last 11 and 12 years. But even with my oldest son now, who's 27 and has a one year old, um, I'm telling him like, you know, you, you gotta start those family traditions, you know, toward the end before he moved out, we had to have to drag him to family meetings because he's just like, I gotta go to work. I gotta, you know, and try to find ways to not be here. Um, but the girls, it's all they've known. 
their entire life. And so they will oftentimes look for it like uh, family meetings late or, you know, you know, and so we have the family laws of the family up on the refrigerator. But, you know, we really have been inspired by your family legacy and who you are as individuals is amazing. So we want to know, how did this start? Like, you know, where did y'all meet? How did y'all hook up and become the mighty, mighty Kyle Fonies? Like, how did it happen? And when did you know? Yes. You were the one yes. for each other. So yes. from meeting to the moment that you're like, yeah, this is the one. <laughs> How did you know that? Well, she dragged me down. <laughs> 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 not at all. She had her, she had her spies out after me, and uh, and lo and behold, I've been here ever since. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, as much as he is so well known, I had no idea who he was, <laughs> and um, I had a, a vegan cafe at the time, uh, the Energy Bar. I don't know if you remember that, but. Um, he used to come and visit the energy bar uh, regularly, and um, but I was never there. My business partner was there. And uh, we had uh, an event that he wanted us to do. And at that point, I had decided I wasn't going to do any more events on Sundays. Um, and his event was on a Sunday. And he was like, oh, come on, sister. It's a family event. You can bring your family. You know, it's the, the drum fest, Africana drum fest. And I was like, that was oh. our first first Pan African Drum Festival. Mm -hmm. Wow! And uh, and so we um, we I you know we catered the event and it was a great time and um, we started you know keeping in touch and I I told him about a um an, another event that we were having at the cafe and he came out and you know I didn't realize that you know he was checking me out um <laughs> I, I I thought he was he kind of carried himself like as, as a family man so you know I just assumed he was like you know married and just you know off limits well, and, I, well I was I was <laughs> I um this is my second marriage mm -hmm. uh so I, I was uh, uh in I was in, in the middle of a divorce situation oh I had and I had the uh, two the two older children with my ex wife, uh, oh. and so uh, that's that was the the basis of the relationship. So that e even then, before I you know um, anybody who I would I would be have any kind of conversation with, no one got to know my children unless I was having planning to have a, a, a more serious relationship with them. Oh, my God. So 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 you you saw something, but you was being. You was holding your post in the situation you were in when you met her. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. well, 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 that that and um, I mean, initially I, I wasn't, you know, um, I wasn't necessarily immediately trying to get into another relationship. So right. uh, that that was that was another another part of it. So uh, yeah, and then uh, you know that so that was uh, that was in uh, in May when we had the uh, the drum fest, and then. In uh, like July, yeah, July when we had the other event, and then um, he was going away um, to Brazil. You know, always traveling. He was going away to Brazil, and uh, he contacted me and he's like, "Oh, sister, um, you know, has you know, are you seeing anyone?" And uh, you know, and I'm like, "Why is this married guy asking me for seeing?" Because I just he just carried himself like that, like you know, like a person that was just kind of off, you know, off limits, and. Um, and he said, yeah, I wanted to know if, you know, you wanted to, you know, go out for dinner sometime. And I said, okay. And uh, he was like, yeah, but, you know, I'm leaving out of town tomorrow. <laughs> so we can, you know, go out when, when I get back. And, uh, you know, I think he was just trying to make sure he, you know, wrote me in before he left town. <laughs> see, 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 now this, so, so my intentionality here <laughs> was that, right, so here I'm going to be out of town. I think it was going to be gone for like two weeks or something. And um, I was going to a conference uh, and presenting my book there. And so uh, uh, my, well, my thinking was that, well, you know, I might be gone. I mean, was, you know, she seems like an interesting sister. Uh, uh, what if somebody else comes along in the meantime, though? Right, so right. Let, me let, me, let, me, let me lock this down just to, just, just, for, just, to, just to check the situation out when I get back. Right, right, right. Let her know because she might choose the wrong food. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, 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 wow. So, so, okay. So, how was that dinner? So, okay. so, when, so when he got back, I had to go out of town for work. Oh, okay. So then I, um, I, I didn't schedule the dinner and one of our good friends, you know, um, was like, what is wrong with you? Don't you, women complain about good men around and then you, you know, a good man wants you to ask you out and you don't, you know, go, go for it. So I was, I was like, okay, so we went on the date and, um, I'm used to, you know, kind of being the one that you know knows everything, and 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 you know every subject I brought up, he knew. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna stump him. I'm gonna talk about technology, right? He knew that too, and I was I was just so I was like, oh no, what what is going on here? And um, and I I vowed I'd never go out with him again. <laughs> I was like, I could tell, like, he was very, you know, like, he was a, a very strong person, and, um, you know, and, and I just was used to being in charge, and I was like, yeah, this is not going to work. I'm never, ever going to go out with him again. Right. Well, you know, Dr. Calfon, you know, you know what, what I always, my um, vibe impression of you is that, yeah, you're, 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 you're obviously, you know, I mean, we've had many, many conversations. You, you had one conversation with this brother and you know that he's, you know, he's extremely intelligent and not from a um, empirical data place, but from a wisdom place mm -hmm. of just having real experiences, which is the intelligence I respect the most because it's the most vetted and it's the most personal, right? But the thing about you that I, I, I would say, you know, most of the um, pseudo intellectuals project their superiority, but a real wise person is um, enchanting and warm. And you know, when a person meets you, you do you you find out very quickly. It's not much you can talk about that this person doesn't know, have some reference about. But mm -hmm. he's still so personable. He's still so funny. He's still mm -hmm. so warm. He's still so attractive, yeah. you know, as a person that you never feel he's never like, well, I know this and I know this too. It's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with that. Have you, did you know about this, this, this? And it's like, oh no, no, I did. Oh wow. Like, damn. Oh yeah. You wrote that book? Like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, it's like, it's like you, you've always had that kind of energy and that's what I've always always you know like a telltale sign for me like when i used to come up to your area and it was like you know i had like three or four friends so i'm going to drop like three or four names and when i dropped your name it was like regardless of the circle it was respect so on the street oh that's a good brother you know intellectuals oh yes um excellent <laughs> and you know what i mean spiritual community oh man he's a he's a he's a righteous king you know so you were getting this I was getting this view from everyone that, you know, I didn't know, but everybody had their different um, experiences, but, you know, they all had the same kind of adoration for you. And that was like yeah. a telltale sign for me, like, this is a hundred percent dude. And then you call like, yo, y'all want to do the hip hop, uh, <laughs> the, the hip hop works? I was like, yeah, I, we had the uh, program Hip Hop Ma'at. And I was like, yeah, definitely. I want to come up there because we were trying to get up there all the time. We're calling your assistant and he's like, Dr. Calvin said he loved y'all and then, uh, we don't have any space this time. And I was like, next time. I was like, no, actually, we got to call him three months in advance. And then we called him and he said, anything y'all want except for that day. Like, you're like, yeah. every time we couldn't get it together. So, um, you know, but I, but I, all, I always have felt that warmness of you. Um, yeah. I've got a great picture, um, Doc, of you and Queen Afua, um, just like in a brace. I'm gonna send it to you. It's, it's, I'm gonna put it up after this video too. Okay, uh, cool. On, on this video, so you can share it and everything. Beautiful, and I'm gonna sneak you the um, <laughs> the video. You know, see it like, damn, I right. out of this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We can just erase her out. It's a beautiful. <laughs> it's only like five of y'all in Queen of Fluid. But it's just like, the watch is like, why am I here? Like, this you know, all, all those wonderful things you say about him, I realized on the second date. 
Oh, and wow. I, after the second date, I realized we were going to spend the rest of our lives oh, together. Because yeah, you said you wasn't going back out. What? what nope. Did you call again, or did you call? Well, um, one of our um, um, one of my friends. She was like, "Now, didn't we say we want an intelligent brother? Yes. Didn't we say we want a spiritual brother? Yes. Didn't we say we wanted an independent brother? Yes. Didn't we say we wanted a brother? You know, that takes control? Yeah. You know. So she was listing all of these things. I was like, "Yeah, I did." say that and he does sound like that and you know I, I, I went to, to the second date with you know a more open mind and um, yeah I knew after that we were going to spend the rest of our lives together wow. Wow. So we actually we actually met years before that and didn't know yeah we uh, we have a mutual friend who had a, um, an event that a very intimate event and I think him uh, him and his, his children Oh, who are my children now, and and me were the probably one of the only people at the event because it was a very small event for her child, and uh, we were in the same living room together, like many years before. Did y'all remember that, or did you put it together? Later? I do. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, there is this book when when my mom was living in Newark. My mom lived in Newark for thirteen years, mm -hmm. and she turned us on to this book. And I forget the title. I don't know if you remember the title of the book, but what the book is about is the the um, the unique times, the, the unique threads in history where people cross each other and then later become really important to each other. Mm -hmm. The way the book is, it's a picture book, right? Wow. And so the way it's done is it's like it is one picture on the beach you see this woman, like she may be doing whatever, flying a kite or something. In the background is a bunch of people. And one of the people was her husband that she was wow. meet. It's, it's done like that. And it's like the craziest stories of synchronicity of mm -hmm. how you come together and you cross a path with a person. And you were like that close to them, but you didn't speak mm -hmm. to them. You didn't know them. You didn't anything. And, and then later they become your your mate and um you know we always talk about that because we grew up in the same town i'm a little older but we kind of lived in the same part of town and our families knew each other but we never ever met i never saw her ever and she never saw me and so um you know it's like that is a really interesting dynamic because we always say how we were probably in the supermarket at the same time one time or something like that and just never you know came across each other but that's really interesting so doc did you so she said the second date she knew did you <laughs> on the second date I don't know if I knew on the second date uh, but you know we were uh uh I'm 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 the I have to call on her and my uh, my uh, older sister for my memory. <laughs> well, she's younger. She's my oldest sister, but she's a year younger than I am. Okay. Uh, when, so whenever whenever anybody asks me about things that happened uh, too far in the past uh, that that are related to me, I always have to refer to somebody else. I get I get a reference. Uh, and then, and then they they were like, oh yeah, do you remember this happened? And I was like, no, but I've never been there. <laughs> So she'll say something about uh, things about when we met, met and, and she left out one part, and that was that she had applied for a job oh, at my yeah. office. Oh. So I interviewed her. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what time this happened in the this, thing. This was in between. This was um, in between the drum fest and the event that I, I was talking about because okay. that's when we were talking about the event was at the interview. Okay, so this was before there was really any interest-oriented thing, uh, but she she came to the office, she interviewed, uh, and uh, we wasn't paying enough money for the thing. But but you know it was just, it was just interesting that that uh, that that was another element of our uh, connection. But her yeah you know, her friend uh, who was the, the co owner of the thing. I mean we had I've been going to the energy bar for probably for years, uh, at least a year, maybe 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 two. Um, and was there, you know, and it was always like during the week or in a weekend or something getting food. I would, I would always pick up food at the energy bar. 
Um, but I had never, I thought, I thought that, that, that Vasti and or somebody else was the owner. And, and then when she said she's the owner, actually, I don't even know if I believed her when she first said, <laughs> oh, <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I, me, me and the owner is friends. What are you talking about? You, you, you're a co-owner of the business. I don't even think I believed her when she said that. <laughs> That's really amazing. That's really amazing. And now, where, yeah, yeah. where are both of you from originally? So, um, you know, don't mess with me. I'm from South Central Los Angeles. Hey, don't mess with me. I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but yeah, no, I, well, I, I was born in Chicago. I was raised for uh, uh, until fifth grade in Grand Rapids, Michigan. But for the most part, I, I grew up in uh, um, in South Central Los Angeles. I went to L.A. high school. Uh and um, you know we were we were uh, not well off when I, I'm a first generation college student. Um, when we when we went to, um, I, I would tell a story all the time about I had to walk uh, 2.5 miles each direction to school to and from school every day uh, when I was in junior high school. Yeah, no, dead serious. I didn't. Know, I never knew how far it was, but then of course Google helped me out one day, and I was like, uh, you know what? I can figure this out on Google, and I'll just put the two things on there and say, boom, two point five miles. I'm like, dang. Wow. So I was in the seventh grade, walking two point five miles to school every day. That's crazy. Wow. Uh, but that's but that's the that was the situation. So you know, uh, you talk about trauma. I mean, uh, we grew up with with trauma. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, <clears throat> just I, I tell my students, I say, look. When I was a, a kid, um, almost every day, if not every day, at least every week, there was uh, helicopters that would fly around our neighborhood, terrorizing the neighborhood. Uh, they would fly so low uh, that it would rattle the glass and anything on the shelf. And you would just, bah, 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 bah. and it's just that, that and, and so really, and they could have seen with the power of their their uh, uh, cameras that they had and the power of the lights that they had, they could have flown another hundred feet higher and not terrorize the neighborhood. But we, it felt like we were in, in Vietnam. You know, and, and that's that. I don't know if it, it's still the same way, but that literally is is how w w what it felt like, because they would be like, you know, one house over here through your own backyard, all kinds of in your yard. all You know, because I mean, I lived in the hood. Wow. I did not know that. I always thought you was from over here originally. Yeah, no. Uh, I, so I moved out here uh, for grad school. I, I got a uh, after after I did undergrad at the University of California. Santa Cruz. Uh, I worked for about three years at UC Irvine, and then I applied for grad school, and I got a full uh, academic scholarship to University of Pennsylvania, and so went to Philly for grad school uh, and finished most of it, and then moved up here uh, while I was, you know, finishing things up. I've been up here for 20, 22, 22 years now. Actually, going on twenty three years. That's that egalitarian you, Ivy Leaguer, huh? <laughs> well, yeah, well, the, the, I say the Ivy League benefited from the ancestral uh, 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 lineage that they, that it was given to me, and uh, but I mean, I, I take advantage of the fact that you know that they have being in an Ivy League institution, um, they have access to some things that other places don't. So that the sky, I, I got a, a fellowship to live in South Africa and to study, so I studied Zulu and Afrikaans. So, Afrikaans and Ingi Kuluma Isi Zulu Kantan, they speak a little Zulu. Uh, so, you know, I, I lived there uh, for about six months studying African history, culture, and language. Oh, shit. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, see, where, where, where did you say, now, where are you from originally? From, uh, from Brooklyn, but my, my family's from Jamaica. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow, so that's a that's a that's a beautiful that's a beautiful coming together. So now, y'all y'all, it's past the second date. <laughs> Dr. Kyle finally done let go and said, "Nah, it's real. I'm, it's for real." You know, what I mean, he said it in social, like it's for real. <laughs> and the tongue click. But so now y'all 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 come together. You know, as y'all start to build. Um, so you're so you're in the same area. So it's not a lot of um, decisions around um, relocating. But when we've been married before, when we've had children before, there's a different type of trepidation that we enter into. You know, when we when we talk to clients who have been married or they are coming out of marriages, 
uh, many of them are waiting for a marriage to end and they've met someone that they like and, you know, the marriage is dissolving, but it takes the time to make it happen. So it's like, you know, I really want to move forward, but it's like this monkey on my back that my morality or whatever, you know, my perception in the world when I'm really just done with this relationship and I'm ready to move in another direction. But then you start to build a relationship. And what I hear often from everyone is that, you know, when I came to Nawash, I had three sons, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, and it was, you know, my story is, is my story is traumatic. <laughs> you want to talk about trauma, but, um, you know, so you're trying to be fresh and new and, and, and build a love anew to a higher station without the residue of the past, without, but with the lessons learned. So Dr. Kalfani, like what, what were you very conscious of as you began to build this relationship? What were some of the things that yeah. you were, you know, that was in the front of your mind that may not have been for her? And I'm, I'm assuming this is her first marriage, right? Yes. Okay. But she had, a, but she had a child also. So she had a child. Uh, and, um, and so then uh, we, the things I, I thought about, well, first of all, that I wasn't introducing anybody to my children who was not uh, somebody who I thought that I'd be spending a long-term relationship with. So uh, so that was like, um, uh, well, you know, let's put that on hold for a minute. Right. Uh, and, and then the other part was that um, I wasn't, you know, I, I, spiritually, I wasn't a, a, a Christian, so I wasn't getting a relationship, a, a relationship with another person who was, because I didn't think that that was the direction, that wasn't the direction I wanted to go. And uh, I had I had, had dates with uh, a, a couple of women who were Christian. And I, I still, even before we went to the Brazil thing, I said to myself, I said, why am I going on a date with these people? Would I ever have anything? I said, no. So I said, I, at that point I was like, Ixnay on, on on the eighth day for that because that was like uh, I I knew that that wasn't gonna uh, 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 mature into anything. Right. So um, you know even now though we you know we, we still have uh, some differences. So I'm a, a an Egungun priest in the Yoruba tradition. Uh, she's uh, practices uh, the comedic, and I, I mean I have respect for and understand a, 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 a great deal of that. Uh, but so that was something that that lended me to um, seeing her as a as a potential. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, and so you know um, that, and I wanted somebody who was uh, committed to African culture and and and. Uh, would be open to me being committed to it. But I'm glad you asked that question because there's one thing that I said to myself for if I ever get married again, that this has to be something. And she doesn't always agree with this. And uh, a lot of women, and I, you guys had this conversation in your previous one uh, 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 the other day when we were watching. And um, my take is different even than your take. And that is that I said to her and said to myself and committed to this, and that is that uh, I like to draw this out a lot of times when I have a conversations that the community comes first, mm -hmm. right? And that I say that because the family exists in a community that was already operational, that was already existing. And so that if you want the family to be strongest, then that family has to work towards the uh, maintenance and the, the, the success of that community. If you, and so a lot of people will say that, uh, well, you know, that, that the family union is the most important thing and everybody you have to attend to that and that's, that's it. And you know, you, what's your relationship between, is between you and your spouse first and, and then children, and everybody, and everything grows from out of there. And I see that as a flaw in our analysis. Uh, and I see it as though, and I do, I, I wrote this whole thing in my introduction to sociology textbook uh, to talk about the family unit, right? And that uh, I have this thing called the web of family relations. And it talks about that we have 64 bi-directional relationships within families, uh, that if we think about it as a existing in the context of a community, that we would operationalize our families differently and have a better maintenance. And I, maybe I'd love to one day maybe go over that with you all so you can oh, yeah. think about it and see that model. Uh, it's something I want to write up uh, and it's, it's, it's part of a, a textbook, but I want to pull it out and just do it like on a relationship thing, because I think it's, 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 it's that useful that it could uh, 
aid us in uh, uh, eliminating divorce in our community because we rely on what we call the uh, the nuclear family or the the um, uh, really it's a European model of the dyad and the triad, yeah. right? So that, that the triad being the, the man, the woman, and the children, but really we operate within the the, the, the man, the woman, the children, the um, extended family, and the first, extended family is just the parents, siblings, uh, and then you have the extended, extended family, which is parents, siblings, uh, family, friends, which are oftentimes stronger than the own, that biological family bond. Uh, then there's the, the tie to the community, Right. And then there's the tie to whatever your spiritual base is. Uh, and so all of these things work differently. And I actually I, I, getting divorced was the thing to help me to understand that model, because right. what happened to me is that I was in I was at Essex County College and uh, the woman who used to watch the children uh, uh, when, you know, my two oldest children were very, very young and we would be out working. Uh, she said she, uh, she was a student at the college and she came to me and says, Oh, Akil, how are you doing? It's good to see you. Um, you know, uh, how was, how was you, how's your wife? She said her name. I, uh, I don't need to, uh, how's it, how, <laughs> how's, how's so-and-so doing? And I said, uh, actually, I don't know. I said, we're not together. She said, and her jaw hit the ground and I'm watching this and it's, it's, it's impacting me. And she said, oh, you know, because, you know, I'm having some challenges. She really revealed that she was having challenges in her own relationship. And um, and she said, well, I guess if, if it's if it's not working for the two of you all, then 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 uh, I can just forget it. And I was like, wow. Right, wow. And it was impactful for me because what that meant is that at what point do we have a responsibility as married couples to the community around us. Yeah, if our relationship is only about us two individuals, because in, in the dyad and the triad, the dyad is actually the weakest relationship. Once right. you break it, it's gone. That's we right. have a we we think differently. We say that oh well, it's the two people. The two people don't have any interruptions. No, the everything around you should be the thing that's holding that together. If we understand it fully, that's right. And and so therefore that community. Uh, the community values, the community beliefs, the community ideas should be the thing that holds the family together. Right. And so that's that's why, you know, in, in we, had, we had traditional African weddings uh, ceremony. And what it, we said in there is that, that this is not a marriage of individuals, it's a marriage of families. Right, right. We, we, and so we even had to go to our parents. We had counseling with our parents before, right, when, when, when we had some issues. Yeah, when, I I, like, when I didn't like her. <laughs> I love that. Because and you're you're coming into a community when right. you're born, right? As you're right, you're born into a community. Exactly. Right. So right. that right. is a call of the community. Whatever your skills and you know talents are going to be is really offered to the community. And I think that even in the triad model, we forget that. Like the purpose of the children coming is still sometimes right. it's just about the two people. And the children are your accessory <laughs> or right. your entertainment or your thing that you just bring out, which is why I think that it was so um, noticeable that you even were moving as a family a lot of times when we saw you. So it wasn't just like, these are the children and they're cute and this is an auxiliary, but this is really like a unit and it's right. beneficial for them to participate in the community at their level, at their, you know, level of interest, level of ability, but that it has Absolutely. value building their character and also that it's still you know building the unit even their perspectives coming back you know towards the older people in the community have value too and i really can say that whether it was like the conversation at your house or just watching you like really having that position that there is um value in those relationships and that is what we find ourselves having a, a problem with now yeah, <laughs> is yeah. that we're in a community where whether it's negative imagery or there's not a value on the children, there's not a value on purpose, and there's not a value on autochthonous culture, a paradigm that is original before colonization. Right. We have issues because we, we're, we're navigating in something that is not about, it's, it's very much about individualism. Even in the relationship, you're only trying to get something from that person. It's still not about the two of you really as a unit. It's like, what can I get from you? <laughs> And right. what can you get from me? And when that matches, we're good. But as soon as it doesn't ever match, our expectation is this relationship can dissolve. Right. And I think that that really is um, important for us to, to look at models of existence that are about unity right. and about a communal aspect. Right. 
I think that we 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 definitely um, promote that concept. And you know, as you were speaking, Doc, I, you know, for me to to be doing this work for so long, um, the thing that really motivated me to believe in community and family and always um, really acknowledge it when I see it is that I didn't have it, right? So my parents were together up into my young adult life, but they were not happy. And it was a very, so I really liked them both as individuals, but together me and my sister, it was like, like they just don't like, we have great times with, with our mom, we have great times with our dad, but when they're together and they're together all the time, um, it's hell, you know what I mean? Like they just don't like each other. And um, the one thing that my dad had said when we, when I was seven turning eight and my sister was um, nine turning 10 is that we need to move from where we are and move to a community that has families because we are an intact family and families need a, a, a larger community. The thing that makes me believe so much in, in love and family, black love and black family and all of those things is that we moved into a community where, um, you know, the black people were a, a, a small major, a minority. They were, you know, maybe 35% of the community. Um, but if it was like, you know, 150 families, whatever, I was really, really close with like 30 friends that I could think of and all of their families were intact. And it was their families that made me, it was the, it was the, it was the um, bi-directional pressure of our family being really unhealthy, but being in a community where all the black families were very healthy. Now, the, the, the interesting point is the community we left from, the city that we left from we were going back there every weekend because my grandparents were there and the way my parents were moving, my mom liked the party. She wanted to get away from my dad and my dad was working or dipping out with his mistress or whatever he was doing. So they would just drop us on the weekend at our grandparents' house. So we were around all the friends that we had grown up with and none of them were from intact families. And so mm -hmm. I began to look and juxtapose what I started seeing in this group of 30 friends over here that were from communities where everybody had families, this group of 30 friends over here that was from people who did not have families and then being uh, going from being uh, uh, not even a, um, a majority, a singularity where it was just only us in one community to moving into another community where you were a very small minority and the, the majority was hostile. You know what I mean? Based on race and stuff. And it is the thing that began to move me in the direction of culture and stuff like that. But what I saw from those families and being able to juxtapose is really what made me say the most important thing is to be to have an intact family and to have that family be within a community that acknowledges the fact that that's important. And so that became a core belief for me. So I agree with you on that 100%. And we actually do, we, we, we advance that idea a lot. Okay. Like, you know, you've got to be in a community. I mean, we wrote about it and all of that. We just say that the, the relationship is, becomes the seed of the community because I think sometimes we're addressing the problem first and then projecting that way rather than addressing the, um, how the stasis should be and then looking at how it deteriorates so we like we start with the problem and say listen you got to come together and then once you come together you got to get out of this area and go somewhere where other people respect being together because a lot of the men that i saw you know um i'm 50 years old a lot of my friends from that community are still unmarried and some of them are just starting to consider i'm like dude you almost dead and you like now you know what i'm gonna just go ahead I just saw one in the supermarket. When we was we ran to the supermarket and I was like, yo, the brother asked us to marry them about four years ago. And I said, hey man, whatever happened? Did you did you did you marry the sister or what? He was like, nah, I ain't, you know, but we still together though. You know, we still together. 
And I was like, really? I said, oh, I, I thought y'all broke up. He was like, yeah, we broke up a couple times. But, you know, man, he was like, I, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead. It's about that time. And I'm looking at you like, bro, I know you about five years older than me. Like, yeah. about that time, it's almost so you got to have like that time. time. You know what I'm saying? So I think that that's really important. But, you know, with with you all, you know, those 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 elements that that, you know, from, you know, the generational um, importance of family, just, you know, um, education and, and, and um, you know, a word that I think of when I think of y'all is dignity. You know what I mean? Y'all have a lot of dignity. You know what I mean? And we. We, um, I remember being at, what was it, Feast of Segment we was at with y'all, um, and Dr. Kalfani was uh, going through something, I think they might have even- Yeah, they did Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa, yeah. I was yeah. about to say, I think it was, they were doing something, Temple of a New, doing something with Kwanzaa, and I was like, um, I remember that day, because we we drove to Feast of Segment, like, we got to leave, and we left early because of the children, we had left them. And we like, it's New Year's Eve, we driving to Newark, and it's, you know what I mean, like, it's crazy. But um, I remember watching you then, and just watching your family, like, I'm like, Dad, they brought the children. Like, this is a nighttime event, but they brought their children. And it's a positive event, it's a cultural event, it's a spiritual event. We never even thought of that. But that's such a, a, a the perfect idea of community. You know, right. Children are not going to be prepared for their position without having seen and experienced community. Right. So right. it is, you know, you don't want to isolate the children and only bring them out. <laughs> like they little toys. Like <laughs> you want to really. Right, so so let me give you an example. So um, one of the things with my uh, oldest son Jakarta, um, you know, I. I had we, we've all come out to a lot of stuff but he for one has taken on the, a lot of this stuff so this year he did his own first kwanzaa at his house in north carolina so he was very excited i sent him some materials uh you know i bought him stuff to do with it but he was excited and he did it and then i told my older daughter i said okay now next year you got to do it with your husband and, <laughs> and so on and so forth you got to do your own thing right because <laughs> you're on your own now you have to you have to be these are things that you have to invoke into your marriage and you know the, the interesting thing is that she married a european man and i said to her i said yeah uh, and i said to her i said I said, uh, I said to both of them, I said, y'all, y'all got to do Kwanzaa next year. Right. Oh. So, <laughs> so that's a, that's a conversation for another day. Uh, <laughs> oh, but, but, but no, I think that, that, you know, uh, children are going to make their decisions and we right. got to, and, and, and I, you know, we had hit, we, her and I, uh, her, me and him, we had a lot of conversations about, about that. I told him, I said, I expected, I expected Ziza to marry, marry, marry African man. And that's, that's part of why. And, and, and so when they initially asked me, I told him, I said, well, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent comfortable with this. And these are the, these are the reasons why. And I said that if I didn't say these things to you, then it would be very difficult for us to have any relationship going forward. So uh, that, you know, I was as open as I could be uh, uh, with uh, all the understanding on those things. And I think we have to 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 think about how we uh, uh, relay these messages. And so when we're having um, uh, programs, it's important that they're there, but also participating. So the other thing that he did is that he's gone to and he organized a protest uh, during uh, things when he was back here for COVID. He was at his uh, school in Berkeley Heights. He was he organized a, a protest with a group of folks, and I came there to support him. Just to, but I didn't take over. I just wanted to videotape it and to to be there for him to encourage him on to do it. And so I've seen him uh, uh, do these things. Even the first time he spoke was at a. I, I put him on for a, we had a press conference at for people, people for Pop People's Organization for Progress, and he was speaking on. Um, education and Chris Christie and they got him on the news and he's speaking he's well uh, Chris Christie needs to do x y and z and he was uh, he couldn't have been more than 11 12 something like that very young uh but for him he remembers that now and that's like wow and so putting them forward and and compelling them uh I won't say forcing but putting them in situations that they have to do things and that's how they really internalize it. And that's what we, that's what I, that's what one of the things I want us to do is that's to figure out ways that we get them to internalize things. Right. Uh, right. Not always easy. Right. Dag, bro. I had lunch with Chris Christie. I got to tell you about that. It was, he, he got me too. We talked and then he was like, come on over here. 
And when I stood over there next to him, he's like, take these pictures. And, and they took pictures and put it in a newspaper. And everybody called me like, what in the hell are you doing hanging around with Chris Christie? He's very smart, but wickedly wise. So, you know, but uh, that's a whole nother conversation. But well, we I know, think that um, I know y'all got to go. Yes. I know the watch you know, just kicked so, a hole in my leg. Under no. the- <laughs> <laughs> that's but what I'm but <laughs> we love y'all so much. I wish we had some more time. We will have some more time off of here. But um, well, we want to give you time to close to, out. To close out. If and, any project or anything. Yeah, I know you got a yeah. lot of things going Community. on. And, and as we do that, I, I want to say that that uh, I want listening to your conversation the other day. Uh, I think I want uh, us to uh, to develop a thing where we all come together as uh, just these couples, maybe who are on the thing and have conversation uh, amongst us. Uh, because I used to do a, a program called Brothers Gonna Work It Out. And it would just be brothers that would come together and we talk about our relationships to our wives, to our children and in society. And I think that as, but we need to do the same thing as couples at, at some point, uh, not necessarily have something that's projected out to the public, but that we, we wanna, how do we address our own issues, right? Uh, how do we how do we strengthen our, ourselves uh, so that we become like my grandparents and have a relationship that's 68 years long, that's right? right? Uh, that's but maybe that's maybe that's even that's stronger that's than their 68 years uh, because they had 10 kids and a different kind of situation. Uh, but now we're, 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 we have the benefit of of education of all these other things uh, are other kinds of experiences. And so I just want to say that that's what, what I think people should do. And they can get in touch with me by irockwithdoc.com. Right, right. Oh man, I love that. I rock with Doc. That's hot. Yeah, man. We love y'all, man. I I think that's you. Just you you know how I am. I I, I'm quick, man. I I, that is the perfect follow up of this whole Acoma Day. Um, to to for us all to come together like that. So be looking out for the email. It's coming. Um, Good. So thank you. But I want to thank y'all too for supporting um Acoma Day for so many years. Yeah, we celebrate every year. Coming and bringing your family to the 10th annual is one of the few that we got great documentation from. So I'm going to send y'all a bunch of pictures. I'm even going to put some right now on this uh, on this thread. Um, but, you know, thank you for all the support over the years. We love y'all. You've inspired us. And, um, you know, we just honored to be all friends. So thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. We, we, we're, we're proud of the work y'all continue to do. Yes. And we, we look forward to uh, uh, the continued impact that you all have globally to, uh, you know, to, to strengthen lives, but also to uh, extend our, our cultural and historical understandings that we, we're, we, nothing should be static. Right. And so that what we do is that we evolve things. So adding a coma day is adding an evolution to our our understanding of who we are as African people. And so then uh, that that what, what are the other elements? What are the other things right that we need to be doing to add to who we are as Africans so that uh, our culture and history continues to evolve and to build on the shoulders? Uh, and I'll end with this, that that oftentimes we and you, you can say whatever you want to say, but I'll end on this. And that is that uh, Europeans uh, misinterpret the story of Ramesses, that they see Ramesses uh, uh, building in front of the edifices of his fathers, uh, 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 making things bigger than his father's edifice. But in fact, what he was doing was continuing the legacy. The right, Europeans right. say he's trying to outshine his father. Outshine, yeah. you know, well, he's, he, he's, he's saying, I'm building on my father's shoulders, uh, yeah. even in the place where he may have built, had something literally built on top of it, that that may be this, the highest sign of honor that here you have embedded within me uh, is my father. Right. And so we can't we can't allow Europeans and others to misinterpret our understandings of our experiences in the world. And we build from there. I agree. I agree. He did the same thing with the Netaru and they try to say he was making himself on their level of the gods. And, you know, I I agree with that 100 percent. But beautiful. Sia, what what you got to say to close it out? You know, he said it all, but, you know, I just want to um, say to, you know, those uh, young folks who are um, maybe looking for a mate, trying to figure out, you know, what's, ha- you know, what should they do? Basically co-sign some of the things that some of your other sp- people said, um, work on yourself, work on yourself. You know, Nuasha and I, we've gone through Sacred Woman. We've done that kind of work. Work on yourself. Be the person that you want to attract. And, you know, I, I, I remember going from um, a you know, single mom 
uh, with one child to being married with two children and one on the way in, in, in within one year. Wow. And, and, and on that note, I actually want to say thank you to her uh, for uh, 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 the, the, the challenges, you know, because going through a divorce was something that, that took 10 years. Uh, and so that, you know, that she was there to be supportive through that process is, is something that, that I respect. Uh, and, um, and that, you know, that, uh, I, I mean, I don't know if, if that I would be, have been strong enough to, to maintain through that without wringing somebody's neck. And so, uh, <laughs> that, 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 that I'm on, on the other side of bars, uh, is a good thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to have the Brazil from jail. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Well, thank you so much. Thank y'all so much for coming in, man. Yeah, we love y'all. Yeah, come on. All right. Odabo. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs>